Now, sequel to President Bola Tinubu seeks week suspension of the four programs under the National Social Investment Programs Agency. The president has approved the establishment of a six special member presidential panel, which will be led by the coordinating minister of the economy and minister of finance, Wale Edu. This special presidential tax panel is taxed with immediately undertaking a comprehensive review and audit of existing financial frameworks and policy guidelines of the social investment programs with a view to implementing a total re-engineering of the financial architecture of the programs with detailed modification to procedures guiding the program's implementation moving forward. And a special presidential panel, which is comprised of ministers representing strategic sectors, will ensure a multidisciplinary approach to the reform effort. It's made up of the following members, coordinating minister of the economy and minister of finance as chairman, coordinating minister of health and social welfare member, minister of budget and economic planning, also a member, minister of information and national orientation member, and minister of communications, innovation and digital economy a member and the Minister of State for Youth as a member as well. And Algeria is seeking a much more strengthening cooperation with France to address the prevailing threat of terrorism in Nigeria and West African sub-region. President Bola Tinubu raised the idea when he received the outgoing French ambassador to Nigeria, Emmanuel Blackman, who was at the villa on farewell visit. President Tinubu, who commended the outgoing envoy for her dedication to enhancing relations between France and Nigeria, urged her to leverage her new role as Director for Africa in French Foreign Investment to advocate the urgent need to upgrade technical cooperation between Nigeria and France to defeat terrorism and violent extremism. Now, reflecting on her tour of duty in Nigeria, Ambassador Blackman shared Notable achievements highlighting France's significant investments and remarkable increase in bilateral trade. She pointed out that France is among the top foreign investors in Nigeria with more than $10 billion investment stock with bilateral trade, increasing by 51% in 2021 and 2022. Recognizing Nigeria's pivotal role in regional security and stability, the outgoing ambassador emphasized the close collaboration between France and Nigeria and other key partners in fostering sustainable international peace, security and development. ...of the French Agency for Development that is now present in 26 out of the 36 states uh, in Nigeria and that have invested, you know, Sometimes. over 3 billion euros over the last 10 years. Um, I also uh, mentioned to His Excellency the President, you know, the, the pride we have taken in supporting uh, the cultural uh, and creative industries, the youth, uh, in many new sectors such as esports, video games, animation. It's been a delight for me to see all these young Nigerian talents thrive and, you know, uh, be able to showcase their uh, uh, talent and their skills in um, abroad, especially in France and in, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, we uh, also count on Nigeria. Nigeria to play a greater role, not only in the sub-region or in the continent, but you know, worldwide, um, as a global and major actor worldwide. And in China, the African business community in Yiwu, Xinjiang province, have been advised to shun the idea of collaborating with evil persons in exporting fake expired and substandard goods and products from China to Africa, which contributes to the destruction of African markets and economy, as well as jeopardizes the lives and health of the African people. The admonition was given by Chimize Okoma Ugu and the Consular General of the Consulate of the Nigeria in Shanghai during the event of year program of all Africa com community in China. He reiterated his office commitment to persuading the host authorities to dissuade the wicked practice of exporting fake and substandard goods and products by establishing regulatory agencies to monitor exports in this same vein. The Consular General called upon the government of the People's Republic of China to consider the high tariff imposed on rather imposed on agricultural export products in China. And that's to China. He made uh, the call during the Global Digital Export Conference in Hangzhou in Xinhan province. Now, 
Well, year 2024 will likely be a year that uh, more than 29 countries on three continents of the world will go to the post to demonstrate the efficacy of democracy. In this report, Comfort Fashion will take a look at highlighted electoral activities in those countries. European Union elections in June will test traditional parties against populist rivals with focus on military support for Ukraine. And in the U.S., there is going to be a possible Biden-Trump rematch, and it is going to be a significant global wildcard. The U.K. will also face a general election with the Labour Party, leading in polls against conservatives. Taiwan's election is under scrutiny from China, with defiance and domestic issues like housing and health care being key. India's election may bring Prime Minister Narendra Modi a third term, with debate over his impact on press freedom, free speech and minority rights. Mexico is gearing up for its largest ever election on June 2nd that could see it elect a woman as its president for the first time. Russia's presidential election is expected to be a tussle between Vladimir Putin and Leonid Slotsky of the Liberal Democrats. Belarus is said to have its first parliamentary election since protests against President Alexander Lukashenko's 2020 reflection. Comfort, Fashion, NTA News. And voters in Taiwan elected Vice President Lai ching te as their new president on Saturday, defying warnings from Beijing not to support a candidate it calls a separatist. Charles Alpha brings us details. The presidential candidate Taiwan's main opposition party, the Kuomintang, Ho Yui, on Saturday considered defeat in the election within hours of polls closing as Lai pulled a wide lead of over a million votes. Voters, especially youths, were concerned not just with China's policy, but with economic issues such as unemployment, housing costs, and income inequality. Lai secured a significant lead over Ho Yui of the main opposition party, the Kuomintang, with Kuwait founder of the populist Taiwan People's Party trailing farther behind. Ho Wu and Ko, who both Favor closer ties with Beijing had argued that the DPP's policies towards China were too confrontational. Lai's victory extends the eight year rule of the Democratic Progressive Party, which is considered the least friendly to Beijing. Relations between Taiwan and China have deteriorated under President Tsai Ing wing, who was first elected in 2016 and is limited to two terms. The election, which China had described as a choice between war and peace, could test recent efforts by Beijing and Washington to repair relations that in recent years have fallen to the lowest point in decades. The status of Taiwan, one of the strongest democracies in Asia, is among the most sensitive issues between the two superpowers and focus will now turn to any potential show of force from Beijing in response. China claims Taiwan as its own territory and has not ruled out the use of force against the island, while the U.S. is Taiwan's most important international backer. Majority of Taiwan's 23 million people are in favor of maintaining the status quo, neither formally declaring independence nor becoming part of China. Lai will take over office for four years starting May 20. Charles Alpha, NTN News. Now, the European Commission has begun to look at a greener Europe through the lenses of the European Green Deal. At the same time, it's opening up discussions about the move to a more digital world, a digital transition. Hamman Jabani reports that the Digital Europe program is a new EU funding program focused on bringing digital technology to businesses, citizens and public administrations. In Europe, digital technology and infrastructure have a critical role in private lives and business environments as it is relied on to communicate, work, advance science and answer current environmental problems. At the same time, the COVID-19 pandemic highlighted not only how much technology can be available for us, but also how important it is for Europe not to depend on systems and solutions coming from other regions of the world. The digital program 
is paving the way for achieving this goal. The Digital Europe program will provide strategic funding to answer these challenges, supporting projects in five key capacity areas in supercomputing, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, advanced digital skills, and ensuring a wide range of digital technologies across the economy and society, including two digital innovation hopes. With a planned overall budget of £7.5 billion, it is aimed at accelerating economic recovery and shape the digital transformation of Europe's society and economy, bringing benefits to everyone, but in particular to small and medium-sized enterprises. We'll take stock of uh, Europe's progresses towards our digital targets on uh, connectivity, skills, infrastructure and technology. The European Cyber Shield to boost our capabilities to effectively detect, respond, and recover from uh, large-scale cybersecurity threats. Europe has the potential to develop a technological leadership as well as a competitive digital single market. Together, we now need to foster an innovative digital economy as well as a digital government based on secure foundations. The Digital Europe program will not address these challenges in isolation, but rather complement the funding available through other Euro programs such as Horizon Europe Programme for Research and Innovation and Connecting Europe Facility for Digital Infrastructure, the Recovery and Resilience Facility and Infrastructural Funds. It is a part of next long-term Euro budget, the multi-annual financial framework 2021-2027. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. A deadly fire outbreak that engulfed Dakar's uh, Malabari slum has left two people dead, with many injured in Bangladesh. Charles Alpha reports. At least two people were killed and several others were injured as hundreds of buildings in Dakar's Malabari slum were destroyed after a fire outbreak in Karwan Baza. The fire left the affected neighborhood in ruins, showing the charred remains of makeshift houses and locals observing as rescue teams inspected the area and cleared the debris. Authorities have identified the disease as a woman and a child, and their bodies have been sent to the morgue of a medical college hospital for autopsy. The cause behind the fire is still to be determined. According to the fire service, the fire may have been caused by an electrical shot short circuit or a gas leak at around 2 a.m. Around 13 firefighters units participated in the extinguishing of the fire for about two hours. Charles Alpha, NT News. Federal and state governments plan to establish joint agriculture tax team that will monitor farmers' performances nationwide under the Food Security Initiative. This is coming as the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security set to commence the implementation of the second phase of the 2023-2024 dry season farming activities in Nigeria. Musa Ali reports. The federal government plans to assist farmers to cultivate 323,000 hectares in this year's dry season farming activities. 123,000 hectares is already under cultivation. The second phase of the dry season farming is to commence this month with focus on rice, maize, and cassava. And this is the reason the AKT and Kebi state governors engage authorities at the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security on how their people would benefit from the program. AKT state governor Abiodun Oyebanji said land clearing, preparation, and access to mechanization we are some of the areas he is seeking federal government support. And we also broken the chain of tenuous attachment to land, the land tenure system. We've aggregated them into property society, they're ready for cluster farming. But when they are ready, the lands are not there. You know, when you when you clear the land, you still have to prepare it and develop it for them. On his part, KB State Governor Nasuru Idris said. He is willing to key into the food security program, especially the dry season farming initiative. Kibbe State has already purchased solar pumps, 6,000, so that uh, our farmers will be able to get and go back to farm and farm. The Minister of Agriculture emphasized the need for states to engage only genuine farmers rather than what he described as political farmers. 
We are determined also to drive in agricultural transformation, enhancing productivity, and ensuring that our farmers have the necessary support to thrive. Our goal also includes ensuring food security and driving down food inflation. The ministry said it has achieved 97% redemption of farming input under the National Agricultural Growth Scheme and Agro Pocket Program. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. You're watching the news on NTA International. More stories ahead. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Stakeholders are charting a course for prioritizing the economic and sustainable development of the marine and blue economy in Nigeria. Vivian Eziadifi covered a strategic meeting on the roadmap, strategic plan and structure for the new ministry and reports that the theme is towards an effective Federal Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy. Federal Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy recently created in Nigeria by the President Sinibu's administration with the sole objective of unlocking the enormous potential in the maritime domain. Determined to ensure that the president succeed in his aspiration, gathered here as stakeholders with a shared purpose to draw a roadmap, create a strategic policy framework that will guide the trajectory of the new ministry in Nigeria. The strategic policy framework we developed today will serve as a guiding document, providing a comprehensive roadmap for the ministry's operations, initiatives, and engagement with the blue economy. We are here to collaborate with you. We are here in, for, uh, as partners in progress. Together, we are going to build this ministry to become one of the best ministries in Nigeria. It's, it's a massive work, and uh, the new ministry has its job cut out for it. This, this is serious, and the president saw this ahead. The pioneering minister of the Federal Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy, Adebwenga Oyetola, says the policy framework will guide the ministry to chart a pathway for the growth of the industry and transform Nigeria into a premier maritime hub. It is wise we continue to partner and work with our numerous and varied stakeholders, both in the public and private space, and to ensure maritime safety and security and to safeguard our maritime ecosystem for future generations. The minister, however, says the ministry is critical to deliver the agenda of the president to double the size of the economy in four years by taking hundreds of Nigerians out of poverty. In Abuja, Vivian Izadifi, NTA News. Now the federal government is committed to improving security in the country with the aim of discovering or rather recovering the nation's forests from bandits and kidnappers. The Minister of Environment, Balarebe Lawa, stated this at the top management retreat of the ministry held in Kaduna. Clement or Lauren Toba reports. It was the convergence of top management of the Ministry of Environment to discuss ways of addressing urgent environmental concerns and to chart a new course towards a greener Nigeria in 2024. With the team, policy embodiment and prioritization of key action for a renewed hope in the environmental management, the retreat aims at deliberating and preferring solutions towards clearing the forest that has become hideout for bandits and kidnappers, thereby slowing down the great green wall project of controlling desertification. If you cut them down, you find that you are exposing the community around that area and gradually the entire country to this carbon pollution and the rest of it. The Minister of Environment, Balare Belawa, says the retreat was necessary for stakeholders to collectively brainstorm on possible ways of addressing most present issues with regards to the operations of the ministry now and in the future. Once you have a system that works, try to maintain it. But that's, I think, that's a, a, a gap that the criminals saw and they passed on it. So I'm calling on Nigeria to come on board with our Mr. President to support the climate agenda of Nigeria to support the preservation of our biodiversity and to support our addressing the challenge of pollution. It's bringing together the management to be able to strategize, position and um, focus the ministry in the direction of bringing the global outcome of the COP28 
between national implementation. Participants who were drawn from across environmental and other sectors of the economy were assured of effective collaboration in the Ministry for the realization of a greener Nigeria and the preservation of its ecosystem. The participants were all to put into use the knowledge acquired while carrying out their legitimate duties. Clement Olorun Toba, NT News. You're watching the news on NT International, also streaming live on Vision TV 247. More reports ahead. Stay tuned. To tell Nigerian story without bias and restore public trust in government, institutions have amplified the voice of Nigeria. Vaughn is calling on the National Orientation Agency for collaboration. Director General Vaughn Jibrim Baba Ndachi says the radio service is willing to support the agency's programs and initiatives in line with the Renewed Hope agenda. Kenneth Nanim reports that the DG and Director General of Vaughn was at the agency on a courtesy visit. Do the right thing, transform Nigeria is the slogan of the National Orientation Agency, a government institution tasked with communicating government policies, promoting patriotism, national unity and development of Nigerian society. Now, the voice of Nigeria, VON, a sister agency, is seeking collaboration with the agency to harness opportunities in the areas of common interest of rebuilding Nigeria's image both at home and abroad by telling the Nigerian story from a positive perspective. The Renewal Hope Agenda of President Bola Nyotinobu is focused on creating opportunities and sending the right messaging about our country and determined to tell the Nigerian story in a truthful, believable, forceful, deliberate, consistent manner. Director General National Orientation Agency, Lanre Isa Onilu, is optimistic that the proposed National Lifestyle Charter, when unveiled, will define the uniqueness of a Nigerian and identify critical role by government and the citizens on nation building. We are rounding off the issue of getting ready in terms of um, the blueprints on the National Lifestyle Charter. We understand clearly that our success lies in how well we are able to annex the opportunities that the voice of Nigeria you know, uh, can give us. Both parties are on the same page on the need to combat the spread of fake news and unverified information which have become tools for propagating negative narratives about Nigeria by unpatriotic elements. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. And in other news, the new Nigerian People's Party is optimistic that the supremacy of the Supreme Court will continue to set standards for the lower courts in the dispensation of justice reacting to the judgment of the Supreme Court which upheld the victory of the Kano State Governor Abba Yusuf. Acting National Chairman of the party Abba Kao Ali said the decision of the Supreme Court to set aside the judgments of the tribunal and appeal court has averted what could have been a dent on the Nigerian democracy. He is hopeful that the party and the governor will set a standard of good governance in the Kano state in reciprocation for the mandate given to them by the people. We are happy that at the end of the whole exercise, NNPP has been vindicated by the ruling of the Supreme Court and the statement of the chairman of the five-man panel, Justice Inyang Okoro, JSC, who rightly observed that there was miscarriage of justice in the outcome of the matter <clears throat> involving our party and our governor, Engineer Abba Kabir Yusuf. And let's take a look at Sunday's weather prospect and other cities of the world.
Industry News. Many thanks for watching. I'm Comfort. I'm Modu.